Hello, uh, my name is uh, Alexander Antipov. I'm the director of the uh, Corrective Jaw Surgery Center here in Roseville, California. And uh, treating uh, jaw surgery patients is my true passion, and uh, that's what we specialize in. We handcraft every case, uh, uh, plan it uh, meticulously, and uh, get a definitive result the for patients. First patient we're going to talk about case one is uh, uh, the female uh, of uh, 24 years old, uh, and she has a very close to class one bite. Uh, she has a little bit of distal occlusion that means her lower jaw is back. Uh, she has a facial decline. Uh, and uh, when she smiles, uh, she shows an upper teeth, uh, but you can see here she has a retrusive chin. Uh, uh, and uh, not a whole lot of asymmetry. Her midlines are uh, relatively leveled. When, when we look at her um, facial profile, it is important to put the head consistently in the natural head position. And uh, uh, one of the ways to do it is the equilibrate uh, uh, the head position by uh, doing certain movements. And then you, you have to look straight, not up, not down, uh, just straight. And uh, just like you're looking at the horizon. And you don't want to have a cam to the head. Um, sometimes we have to adjust the uh, head position for certain uh, asymmetries. Uh, we like uh, quarter views for cheek profile, smile views, and then we produce the CT scan with the airway. So now, before we used to just have a lateral set, now we have the capabilities to do 3D scans. And uh, this scan was uh, taken uh, uh, in, the scan, uh, in the scanner and the patient was uh, looking up. So it definitely has to be adjusted to the natural head position. So you, you see how much discrepancy we have? We have to rotate that image to plan correctly. So this is before and after surgery. You can see the soft tissue profile changes, double jaw surgery. Uh, we have upper Lefort one osteotomy. Uh, we have lower bilateral sagittal split osteotomy. We have chin advancement uh, via uh, genioplasty advancement and down grafting. And we have uh, probably about six degrees of the occlusal plane rotation. So uh, the key to get this chin out, you can't just bring it out and you cannot do too much of advancement. So on, uh, usually we like to do about two to four millimeters of the osteotomy uh, on the chin. Um, and sometimes we have to do more, but it's better to do less to have a nice legal mental fold, uh, which you can see this is the rested position here uh, for a patient. So, uh, the profile drapes around the bone uh, nicely. And uh, you can see the increase in airway. And the pogonium came forward 25 millimeters in, in, for this patient. So this is the occlusion after the surgery. So we kept the midline straight. This is the profile change, three-quarter views. Um, a lot of patients, they look for uh, cosmetic result as well. And they would like us to enhance their cheeks. Uh, a lot of women like big cheeks, and uh, that's what we do. So this patient got cheek implants. Uh, we did a uh, revised nasal base uh, for uh, better nose nasal projection, and uh, we did the uh, lip uh, reconstruction. So again, this is her. Uh, this is her preoperative mouth opening. So, um, so I showed you the final result. Now we're going to talk about. Uh, the problem that this, this patient had. She, had. she had very close to class one, but she had severe TMJ uh, problem. So she couldn't uh, open, she, uh, she had uh, uh, severely resorbed condyles, they were like a drumstick, if we look at the TMJ uh, health. So those patients, especially females, I mean only females, uh, get that problem, it's called estrogen uh, associated uh, condyle resorption, uh, idiopathic condyle resorption. We do get estrogen levels for those patients. Uh, and uh, you can get uh, a patient with a full mouth veneer reconstruction that will get a uh, facial decline like at 17 or 18 uh, years of age and you have to look for this. So if you see somebody who is retrognathic and they want to improve their appearance their uh, full mouth re re restoration or orthodontic treatment, you have to catch it early. Uh, simple tomograms like this will show a lot and uh, uh, what is the definition of condyle remodeling? Uh, functional remodeling in class one by this maintain. So th that's what uh, maintain. This is what this patient is. Or this functional remodeling when, when it results, results in class two bite, bite that, that means, means the patient, patient slipped. slipped. And I will show you that 
uh, in a few cases after, there's a patient who had class one perfectly done by uh, distinguished orthodontist, uh, and uh, she slipped, and uh, she slipped when she was 17 into severe class two malocclusion open bite, and part of that probably was her estrogen. So dysfunctional remodeling, uh, also uh, uh, synonymous with uh, idiopathic female condyle resorption. That means the etiology is unknown, uh, but hypothesis that estrogen is, uh, the, is the problem, receptors of estrogen, and then resorbs um, the condyle. Idiopathic condyle resorption, progressive condyle resorption of vascular necrosis. Team J protocol uh, for us here, uh, and, and this is just a small number of things we do preoperatively, but we start a year to six months. Uh, we uh, medicate those patients, we medicate condyles uh, with uh, uh, simvastatin, omega-3, doxycycline, sometimes we put them on anti-inflammatory feldin, uh, vitamin E, C, and uh, anticonvulsants, amitriptyline, and sometimes in permanent soft diet. They do get splint therapy of some sort and uh, Botox injections. So again, let's look at the uh, patient profile uh, with the 3D. Uh, so we use the titanium plates and screws, and with a big advancement like this, we double plate, because this is from here to here, it's osteotomy gap, it's very big, it's probably 12 millimeters. But if you get 12 millimeters here, it doesn't mean you're Pogonian, which this point right there, can you see the mouse when I do this, yeah? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is Pogonian, this is the most anterior point of your chin. This one actually came uh, on this patient probably about 27 millimeters, so more than an inch forward. Uh, so how can you get that inch? You can't do it by just sliding jaws like this. You have to change occlusal plane. You have to rotate the face this way and get the chin uh, by uh, counterclockwise occlusal rotation of both jaws. And that will kick that chin forward. Uh, so that, that's history, but I have to show this. This is the face ball. So you can realize how bad that uh, retrognathe is because patient is in the splint and that's where the joints are seated now, and she has a face ball. So she has a face ball, and she stands in front of the door, uh, so I'm looking for the uh, vertical lane, and I have a grit in my hand, and I'm looking uh, to make sure her true vertical plane of her face, which is a, uh, the aberration is TVL, true vertical line, uh, which, is, which is run from subnasally, and uh, you can see that uh, line right there. I run it through the uh, nasal base right here, and uh, I want it to be probably uh, about four millimeters in front of glabella. And then this is our true head position right there. And I put that articulator bar parallel to this uh, string right there. So I have a grid in my hand and I'm standing and then the picture is uh, taken from behind. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at the uh, occlusal cans uh, as well. And uh, there's another picture there. So you can see there's my hand right there, there's my finger holding that grit, and I'm just checking her uh, uh, face this way. So again, this is her uh, preoperative profile. This is surgical planning on the dolphin imaging software. So that's how we planned. Uh, and that's what we got. So uh, pretty much we can get uh, very accurately right now because everything is handcrafted. Every case is handcrafted. Uh, and uh, now it's even more accurate and predictable with the 3D planning. So this is still 2D. I had to cut the models. I had to articulate them. We don't do this anymore. I'll show you how we do it now. Uh, it's all 3D. Just like you take digital impressions for, uh, you know, instead of uh, impression materials on, in selected cases, uh, we do that uh, with the 3D planning. Uh, and uh, that's her uh, uh, s uh, third week after surgery. And those patients with those very funny Team J's that are drumsticks, uh, you have to uh, establish the Team J protocol early. What does it mean? You have to mobilize them. You need to make sure there's a hydraulic pressure in the joint, bringing oxygen, and it's healing. They are, uh, they're always on tetracycline. They're always Botoxed. Uh, uh, heavily in, in the masseters and temporalis because we don't want any uh, parafunctions of the masseter. Uh, and uh, uh, they always have a class 2 elastics of 4 ounces. And they always have uh, scale fixation. So what helps now, 
uh, let's go back to this uh, 3D picture. You see those screws sticking out of the jaws right there? Those are TEDs, it's temporary anchorage devices. Uh, and so we put uh, elastics on those TEDs instead of putting them on the um, braces. So that makes the, uh, the facial traction. And uh, you know there are lots of nuances, and these are probably the most important. Is early mobilization, medication, uh, soft diet, uh, and uh, uh, skeletal suspension. So it's uh, like belts and suspenders. So again, this is three weeks after surgery. We can see profile improvement. Uh, this is the bite uh, after braces are removed. Uh, this is the uh, face before and after. So we can see the uh, chin point came probably right about there. Because those uh, images are consistent. So for her forehead, uh, her uh, inclination of her face is exactly the same. And you have to adjust it. So now we use, uh, when we scan, we put facial markers on. So when we scan, uh, put the image on the uh, uh, on the cephalogram tracing for 2D in a 3D planning. Uh, everything is uh, uh, in the natural head position, so this is important. So uh, obviously, patient improved the facial balance. You can look at the airway, so uh, upper jaw forward, uh, approximately uh, five millimeters, lower jaw forward perfect occlusion, and a lot of counterclockwise rotation of the face. A lot of counterclockwise rotation of the face. 